Well, good evening, listener land, and everybody out there. We tonight we're going to um, get some views on front men slash women and uh, thoughts on what makes a good and what makes a bad one. Well, I've given this some thought, and and that was it. No, it's it's what makes because it's an individual thing. This, isn't it? I think it is. What yeah. makes a a front man or a woman for me might not be for for you or the vast majority of other people. Does is it necessarily? Does it have to be the singing voice? Does it have to be something that's charismatic, charismatic and engaging with the audience, or does it have to be some mysterious type person? I don't know. How how, how do you think see a, a good, front man? I think a good one does it all, doesn't he? He's got the voice. He's got the. I guess so. Energetic, because I suppose he transforms the energy of the band across to the to the crowd, really, doesn't he? Yeah. They're all in the background doing what they do, and he's out there going left, right, up, down, doing all this stuff, and he's a, he's, he's a focal point of the band. Yeah. Any good examples of that? Uh, J Jagger. He's a good one. Freddie. I... The, 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 they're all up there, aren't they? They're all moving about, doing things, and... You know, you, you want to watch them. Yeah. What you don't want is, well, for me, is a Gallagher thing that just stands in the middle of a stage with his arms behind his back doing an uh, impression of a giraffe. Well, he's got his mic. I'm going to have to disagree with you there. So I think I, I think the key point, really, and you are right with, with what you were saying, but I think the key point, if you were to refine it further, is what you want from a front man is confidence. Yeah. And you need to believe that they are leading the band. So when you talk about Liam Gallagher, Liam Gallagher does not run around and clap and jump like Mick Jagger. Um, but what he does do very well, and I've seen him a couple of times, he stands there with pure confidence, somewhat arrogantly, and barely moves the whole set. And he stares up at a mic and swaggers and has his hands in his pockets. But the thing is, you believe he's confident. See, that to me is, but that's he, like, he's, that, he's the, that's the, like his way of saying, Fuck you! I can't be asked. Just give me your money so I can go no, back. No, it's it, all bricks. I, I think it, it, whether you're just fans got... of Oasis or not, I, I, there's something about that. It's some. It's enigmatic. It's it, it's electrifying to watch it. Um, and it's the complete opposite of Mick Jagger. But they they're almost like if you were to cut a line in a circle where they meet, they're at opposite ends of the scale. Polar opposite. Polar opposite is is a complete opposite of of dancing and jumping. Um. But I don't. It, I don't want to go and watch that. Well, maybe, maybe I don't want to watch somebody in a long raincoat stand and do a giraffe impression for an hour and a half with his hands behind his back. Another one would be Tom York. So Tom York, you could say, is Tom York from Radiohead. You could say, he's quite a shy character. Doesn't really like doing interviews. He's reserved. But when you watch them perform, he's got confidence in what he's doing. So the character that he is being. Is confident now. You know he's got this lazy eye. He's not the prettiest um, guy in the bunch, but he's confident and he's, he has his presence. And it even even when it comes to like uh, vulnerable songs, there's a confidence behind it. The thing about that, though, for you, I accept what you're saying, but the the difference between the two artists that you're referring to is that Radiohead's Tom York has got an exceptionally good voice. Do you know who who he bases his voice on? I don't know. Neil Young. Really. He's a big Neil Young fan. Oh. So that falsetto stuff. Yeah, Neil yeah. Young. Yeah. He has got a great voice, though. Yeah, but... A wonderful range. But and Liam hasn't. No, I disagree. So Liam doesn't have a great range, neither does Mick Jagger. But... Oh, I don't... No. It's got a character to... I don't I don't think it's about voice. I think it's purely confidence. It's I think character. You, I think you have to believe the character. Well, you mentioned somebody the other week, and you were right, you're absolutely right when you said it. Um, the Australian kid. The Australian kid. Dark hair, sleek bike. Uh, in excess? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no. No. I mean, he has got dark hair, sleek bike, but uh, dark hair, sleek bike hair. Aust oh, Nick Cave. Nick Cave. Right. Not the world's best singer. No, he doesn't. But a very engaging singer. Confident. Confident singer. And I think that's what Mick Jagger has. He's got, he's got a certain amount of projection within his voice that he can, he can, he can put a tune over. But you, you're buying into the character that Mick Jagger is on stage. You're believing it. That's like, what his job is. Yes, that's his that, job. Yeah, no, but that's confidence. Yeah. Right? If you're if you're watching somebody who's not confident on stage and is a bit feeble and a bit weak and you don't, it's like, you feel like, oh, I, oh, this is like, 
that's not that's not the job of a frontman. I think the pure element of a frontman is the like false confidence. So Freddie Mercury, very shy off stage. Very shy. Prince, yeah. very shy off stage. But you see him on stage, you believe that this is them. This is what they are off stage. Yeah. Well, look at you me on stage. Exactly. Completely different person. Wet yourself. Then you think, yes, he wets himself off stage too. <laughs> but Freddie, super confident. Yeah, really go. Well, I, think, blah, blah, blah. I, I just think Gallagher just fetches his arrogance off a of stage onto stage. He's and he looking, just he does cle he's become a parody of himself though, hasn't he? Yes, yeah. Yeah. He, he just stands there with his arsehole attitude. I'm not well, that gig. I mean, are you right, Wayne? I, mean, I accept what you're saying. Because his brother had enough of it. Yeah. He couldn't have a, have any more of that. Tantrum like behavior. I don't know if it was specifically that. I think it's because Liam made allegations about the legitimacy oh, of it his daughter. It for years, though, weren't it? The, the fact that he was just like, he, didn't want to, he wanted to fight everybody backstage. He wanted to fight everybody in the audience. He, he, just, women. he thought he were 10 men. But no, I just, I want to go and watch a front man that's got a good voice, that, 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 that's an entertainer that, that, yeah. that, that, that you watch. Yeah. Tony Christie. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Yes. No, no, knock him. Well, you'd find Google I mean, Maps, he'd find I mean, the way then. Yeah, I mean, even people like Robbie Williams. Yeah. He puts on a good show. Confidence. Confidence, good show. Don't stand there doing his giraffe impression with a big rain mac on all night. But nobody get... else does it like Liam, though, do they? Thank God. I don't know. Thank God. What you don't what you don't want is a lot of frontmen like Liam. <laughs> Liam I, think, and... I think that's gained. I think what you were hinting at earlier, Louis, is, uh, is that that's the persona is now worked out and he's, he's created that character hasn't he he's got to keep it up now he can't he can't come over all nice and nice now because it's too late that's not what people want to see or expect to see from him well, he's not, i don't think he's an arsehole in real life i think he plays up to this thing on camera where's his character yeah. and it's an abrasive character now and i think a lot of that is in his nature how much i don't know i don't know him so i can't judge mm. all right anybody else win well, I mean, there's loads, isn't there? I mean, you can keep going here. Ozzy, Ozzy Osbourne, Coverdale, they're all frontmen. They're all got good voices. They're all... Ozzy's got a good out. voice? Ozzy's well, not got a good no, voice. No, he's not, but he's a, he's a good frontman. He's a good frontman, yeah. He's a good frontman. He's a vocalist. He's not a singer. He's a vocalist. Can I throw one into at you? I know. Go on, then. Larry Lorix. From? Where? Sorry? From? Who? Larry Lorix? Yes. You mean, just, there's people now, they're screaming at the... Phones and the computers. Oh, they're obviously anger issues. You, yes, you have. two don't know Larry Lorex. Maybe you can enlighten us. And then tell us. Larry Lorex. Sounds oh. like something that made Andrex. All oh, right, I'll tell Larry Lorex. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's get the notes out because he can't remember. I can't. <laughs> no, all right. Well, I'll put me All notes. right, I'll show you. My notes have been Come returned on, to their tell notes. Tell us a story about old Larry. You know, enlighten us. Right, Larry Lorex. Is that my time? Is that you like released? Right, you're going to have to have the long story. Oh, God. <laughs> it's not the one where you've got 32 other drummers, is it? No, no. The long story is this. <laughs> there was this particular band that got signed to Trident Studios in London. And Trident Studios in London was run by two brothers, Barry and Norman Sheffield. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you said Roddy and Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they were a little bit like that. But it were the Sheffield brothers. The Sheffield brothers. And it was <laughs> no, it was Barry, Barry and uh, Barry and Norman, I think. Barry and Norman Sheffield. Chuckle brothers. It could have been, yeah. <laughs> uh, and this particular band got signed to them, and the deal was that they would come in and use downtime on other people's recording time to record their album. As, which meant that they could be sitting around for hours and hours and hours just waiting, like. David Bowie would go in and he'd have the studio book from, say, six o'clock the previous evening to six o'clock the previous next day, next morning. But he might leave at three o'clock in the morning. So that studio becomes vacant. So they went in and did their little bit and recorded what was to become their first album. And this was going on some time. And they got, some, they got a producer in and he says, I want to do a, a couple of tracks. Uh, and one of them was an old Ronettes number. I'm trying to think of what it was now. Be my little baby. Yeah. It could have been that one. Yeah. Could have been that one, Louis. You aren't right there. And they did two tracks. And one of them was going back. And the other one was the... <laughs> I can hear music. You know, the Rig Waller sound type thing. Rick Waller? 
Ron Eston. Oh, the Phil Spector Wallace. Yeah, album. that's the one. And they did that one, and they did it in the downtime, and they released it as a single, or two singles, but they both bombed because the name Larry Lurex was a bit of a piss take. They decided to call himself Larry Lurex as a bit of a joke against Gary Glitter. <laughs> Here's the hello, weird Gary Glitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <thanks. laughs> oh, double G. <laughs> because at the time, the leader of the gang, Gary, was extremely popular. Oh, very well. He was extremely popular, and all the uh, all the DJs of the time they didn't like people taking the piss out of double G. So they uh, they, they wouldn't play this song. They didn't get any. Mu- they didn't get much airtime on these two songs. So consequently, Larry Lurex didn't have a hit and it got despised to the bargain basement of Woolworth's Basket. However, I have recently seen a copy of this track, I Can Hear Music, as a, an acetate uh, test press, which basically is a, an acetate test press, is like a, a mini single. It's only on one side, There's not, it's not meant for commercial use, it's just like to test the press. And this particular track, were going for £150,000. Good Lord. Yeah. Larry was a quite a big deal. Yeah, well, it became Freddie Mercury. Oh, God, that was a long way around, wasn't it? <laughs> you could have just said it's Freddie Mercury. No, I could have done, but that would have been... Oh. <laughs> God. It's anything to shoehorn bloody Gary Glitter in. Yeah, he's got to have him in there, hasn't he? <laughs> Yeah, it was downtime that they were working on. So I can only apologise, listen, Lance. Freddie got, got, go. got roped into making these two tracks, and they didn't do anything for his career. But he got, <laughs> but it, they're they're not. Con- consequently finished finished the album, <laughs> and it, and that didn't do a great deal anyway. It did later on once it had been established that they were good. But right, okay. Well, how did I get onto that? No idea. So what's, you've not mentioned many front men. Uh, I did. Oh, front I went, front I, I, my thing about so he, he defended Liam. All right. Yeah, so he I, you've not I'll, mentioned people. I'll just... defend Liam. I think is I think it's very good. So a good front man for me, man for me. All woman. There's not all, all, all no, woman. There's some good um, women out there. You know what? So I'm going to Glastonbury this year, and one of the acts are Blondie, are playing. Mm. Blondie is yeah. a good front one. Yeah, brilliant. But she. I don't think has... it's called Blondie. No, but she has a bit of a nonchalant sort of casual, uh, casual arrogance. But that's part of I, like the, the I, sort would, of... I would say she's typical New Yorker. I don't know about that. I don't know. You do? A typical <laughs> New Yorker. Uh, yeah, she's got that typical New Yorker, like, nah. I don't even know if she's from New York. Well, anyway, I, I, I think she's, uh, as for a female artist, I think she's, she's good. I, oh, another female artist that I really like, which is on probably the Mick Jagger spectrum, is Kate Bush. I think Kate Bush is fantastic. Yeah. Discovered by David Gilmore. Yeah. Another good one. Yeah. He's a, she likes to run around, dance, and um, flex her vocal range. And she's not afraid. She's not afraid of like looking stupid. She does weird and wonderful stuff. And she, uh, she's a woman of her own, own mind. And she hasn't toured. She hasn't done a live concert since like, I think it was 79. And then she did something in like 2017 or one off show. Um, so I think Kate Bush is fantastic. Front men. Uh, I mean, this is off the top of my head. I, I, there's a, a good live recording of Otis Redding doing um, what song is he doing? It, it's like a medley. Uh, it, it does one of his songs and it, and it goes into uh, I Can't Get No t- Satisfaction. And it's so good. He's, he's, he's leaping around, but it, it feels like he's trying to re- like he's trying to repress and he should become conformed to being a soul singer, but is is almost stomping like Ozzy Osbourne, which is really, really James good. James Brown. Well, that, that leads me on to James Brown. James Brown. So J- James Brown used to dance for spare change outside a brothel when he was a kid. He's, he, he used to busk dancing. Um, he's not well-educated, or he wasn't well-educated, and but he, he got this amazing musical talent and he could vocalise what he wanted the band to do. Uh, on stage is just this... The creature just sliding like so. There's videos of him. There's a, there's a YouTube video of James Brown. It's not a YouTube video. It's a video of him in the seventies, and he's wearing some sort of like knitted dungaree. Yeah, and nice. and it's like he's giving dance lessons, and it's like it's like a VHS that you would buy. A VHS for the younger listeners out there is a large plastic thing with film inside. 
and and it is like this is this one's the mash this one's the mashed potatoes and he's doing the, <laughs> and this is the buckaroo this and, is the crocodile oh this is the co- the camel walk and he's yeah, doing the, but <laughs> but what it, it's funny because he's probably like I don't know forty five but it is cl- but he's clearly hiding a walk he's he's clearly been smuggling oh, yeah. a walk he's got his pot belly and he's dancing around and stuff and it, it's amazing to watch but on stage he was phenomenal um, and it makes you wonder how he, he carried such a belly if he was dancing so much like that just to round it up I'm going to say James Brown is a phenomenal performer because James yeah. Brown yeah. was a big influence for Mick Jagger Mick Jagger copied so many moves of James Brown Tina Turner another fantastic well, that's, female that, that she's the female Mick Jagger or the Mick Jagger female, well, female James Brown she was uh, yeah. Big James Brown, Mick Jagger stole a lot of moves off Tina Turner. Yeah, he used to analyze her. He was like a big fan of Tina Turner before she became a but power she's ballad. A, she's a crab dancer. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Tina Turner can't walk forwards. She can only walk <laughs> side to side. Um, <laughs> it's it, 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 it's just unfortunate, but you know, it's true though. It's yeah, it's, funny. She, she can't walk. Once you see it, you can't unsee that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so for females. I've just listed them there, but I'm just going to recap. Kate Bush, Tina Turner, James Brown, Always is Ready, Mick Jagger. You know what? I'm going to say Rod Stewart from The Faces. Yeah. Yeah. The faces. Yeah. yeah. Specifically. Yeah. And I like that. It's like a bar. Lads who, it's it's laddish who are boozing and they're... Good they, time band. Good time band, yeah. And it was all, it felt, everything felt like, oh, it went like, yeah. You want some... See, all them people you've made there, you, you've mentioned... And they're, they're all raw eye catchers. Eye yeah. catchers. They're not just stood there. They're not. The audience entertainers, they're, they're, entertain. they're engaging the audience and everything that they're doing. Which is what I was trying to say. Yeah. But in beginning. regards to Tina Turner, Tina Turner would fit into my category of. Same with James Brown. Yeah, it's but, she, would, all, but right. she doesn't stand there. She entertains. No, but she eye catches. The confidence. You go right? to what? You, you believe that it's Tina Turner, but Tina yeah. Turner at the time, when you're watching all these amazing performances, was actually being beaten by Ike Turner, and she was actually a very weak individual. James Brown felt an, an incredibly thick. He didn't speak any musical language. He'd got this chip on his shoulder about where he came from. So there's a vulnerability to him, but on stage, confidence. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the. the there's, there's certain people out there, isn't there, front men, that, all right, one of the best front men I've seen, singing-wise, is uh, Kelly Jones. Now, I know he doesn't move around a lot. He is very good. Yeah, yeah. But he just stands there. He's a good guitar player as well. He is yeah, a good yeah. guitarist. Yeah. But he just stands there and he sings because he can. Yeah. But, but he does sing this... like Rod Stewart in the faces. Really? He did. You think he, so? He's a big fan, though, isn't he? Yeah, he's got that raspiness where he needs a good cough. Yeah, but, but he doesn't deny that. But don't, deny that. But don't he, you think... He just stands here and sings. And when you watch him, there's no effort. He's not trying to sing. Mm. He just sings because he can and he yeah. can sing. And he ain't got to try because he can just do it. Mm. And and that's a difference again. It's that next level in Yeah. It's yeah. That next level. I mean, I've seen him, I mean, you've seen him, haven't you? I've seen him a couple of times now. And you go and you, and you just come out and you just think, what a voice that guy's got. Yeah. He, he doesn't even break sweat. He doesn't even try and hit them notes. Maybe he he's got that like, Prince do... uh, Philip thing. Is it Prince Philip or he doesn't... Prince Andrew? He doesn't sweat. Maybe it could be that. <laughs> 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 but you just think, no, he, he, he's, he's, not, he's not even tried tonight. He's just done it because... Yeah, he, that's that next, because, next level Because of he ability. can do it. He's yeah. just done it because that's what he does. Another he Welsh does guy. It. Tom Jones. Tom Jones. Yeah. Oh, oh, not yet, Tom. <laughs> Very lovely, isn't it? <laughs> no, you're too late. Get behind but, Paul, yeah. and Paul can get behind. But you. yeah, I mean, he's a good. Have, have you guys ever heard? Of, I mean, I've heard of him, but I didn't know that I had heard of him. Out, if that, that'll make sense in a minute. Have you heard of a band called Geordie? Yeah, sure. yeah. Have you yeah. heard of a band called? No, Geordie? I don't heard of a band. They're, they're an old band, then. They are an old band. They are yeah. an old band. Do you know what they sing over? Wait a minute. Yeah, it were. Uh, yeah. It was Jono. Oh, well, Jono, and you know so, the, who's Jono? Uh, Brian Johnson from yeah. uh, the second one from ACDC. And do you know that he appeared on Top at Pops 14 times with Geordie? Yeah. No, I didn't know that, but that's a good statistic. That. Yeah. And uh, also, he must be one of the most, he must have a record for that. Well, he has, he has appeared before he got the ACDC, he was lead singer with Geordie, and he appeared on there 14 times. But not only that, it were, were once doing a, a, a gig, and this guy will we a band called either Fag or Flag or something like that. I can't remember the name of the band now. Big smokers? Uh, uh, it, it, it were either Fag or Frag. No. 
something like Cracking. that. And anyway, so these guys um, were on the same bill. Right. So they did the stuff, and then Jono and uh, Jordy, but this is before they got to Top of Park. They went, they, they were staying in this local uh, bed and breakfast. So these guys had a puncture from Fag. So when, so they come knocking on this door <laughs> because Jono had told them where they were. Right. And they come knocking on window and said, Can we come in? We've got a puncture to blah, 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 blah. And so they got chatting and anyway, tire man come and changed all the blah, 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 blah. blah. So as he went away, oh, please me anyway, what's your name? Oh, uh, my, my name's uh, Scott. Scott, all oh, right, yeah, Bon Scott. It will be a band called Fag. It will be a band called either Fag or Frag. And it no, they were, it, they were fraternity. Close no, enough. No, f- no, I'm sure it was Fag. Frag. Fraternity. It, it, it might have been before that. Well, it came over because to, he, it came because up to England with a band called Fraternity. Because John O went with a, another band then called Jordy Two. Who were bigger on? What the... could it have been? To Jordy. Oh, <laughs> it, um, they were even bigger on club scenes. They were a club scene band. They were massive then with them. Right. But yeah, so he met Bon Scott before he knew who Bon Scott was. Yes, yes, that's a story. Isn't and it? he yeah. actually became like his, you know, he took his job type of thing, didn't he? But but, but it was just saying, but how it weird was, it, it was. It was one of them chance meetings, weren't it? Yeah, that he, 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 he met this guy who would take his job when he died. And he, this is years and years and years ago, even before he knew who he was. Yeah. And then when that packed up, he, and I didn't know this as well, that he joined Paris, um, John O. Yeah. Because um, his mate told him that they were hiring. They were recruiting in Paris, and if you did it for 12 months, you got 200 quid. So John O thought, this is great. This is this will buy me that PA system that I've always wanted. So he joined Paris and did 12 months in Paris. He ended up doing God knows how many jumps, and he got his wings for Paris, but he also got his 200 quid, and when he came out of there, went and bought his PA system. And that was his first PA system, and that's how he afforded to afforded his PA system when he was it's first setting up the order. Yeah, he didn't didn't do right well, did he? No, he didn't do what at all, did he? But also, he, he when Geordie packed up, did they pack up? Yeah, because he left, or did they just pack up? Well, they packed up for different reasons. Uh, I think guitarist and drummer left, so right. they all packed up. So he went fitting windows, okay. uh, sorry, windscreens. Right, we're doing windscreens, and then he got his own business doing vinyl roofs. So he got called out one day on a uh, breakdown. This uh, chap had got his windscreen done. So John O goes out, gets to think it's a big black limo, and he's thinking, God, who's this? So he gets there, he, uh, these two blokes get out in suits, and they say, How ah, long? He says, 15 minutes. Right, get on. He says, I've got somebody back here, it's got to be on stage for nine o'clock. So he takes windscreen out, puts windscreen back in. Blah, 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 blah. But yeah, that's it. All done, mate. Yeah, off you go. You're, you're, you're good to go. And he says, that's car pulled away. He says, it stopped. A window came down at the back and it was Roger Daltrey. <laughs> oh, well, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, he is royalty, isn't he? Mm. He is royalty. He's like, he's like Mick Jagger. And he invited him round to his house. He went down there and stayed weekend with yeah, seems like a nice guy as well, old Roger. Yeah. yeah, he likes uh, fishing and farming. He used to have a trout farm. I don't know whether they still got it. I think he did. Do horse riding as well. Yeah, like that, but he used to have a trout farm and he, 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 he keen fisherman. Did you know that he um he has scarring um apart, something something like when he was a kid he swallowed a, a nail by accident and it scarred. How did you do that? Well, I don't know. Maybe he was hungry, but um. He's probably hanging out with Jimmy Nail. Huh. Iron deficiency. But anyway, it, it scarred something in, in his stomach, or and, and went up through the operation to take it out. They like they use some sort of like uh, material or cleansing fluid on him when it uh, to operate in his stomach. So it, it makes him look like he has a great physique, but he says that he just can't produce fat on his stomach because I'm not it, that. It, it, it's this operation, this like botched job, what they did back in the early, I don't know, the late fifties, early sixties. It buggered, him, it, 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 it buggered him up that he can't produce. So it, it's probably not great for him, but it, it's, it's the scar. It's basic scar tissue that doesn't it doesn't produce fat. It's it's the scar. It's not the same as flesh. Right. So yeah. that's why he just tends to look. That's why he's not got a, a walk. Oh, okay. I've I've got a good question for you, both. Yeah. Who has the largest range? Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> of sound. 
The of largest a, range of oh the largest which which person or singer should we say has the largest range of sound. I think I've heard this before, and it's not who you yeah. think. It's not. Well, I was very. Do you know when I initially heard this? Uh, uh, my, my, my first light bulb was Billy Gibbons. No. Uh, it's somebody like weird, like Kurt Cobain or something like that. No. Because he can travel over several octaves, can't he? Yeah. Uh, who is it then? It's actually Mariah Carey. Oh, oh okay. uh, I think yeah. you're on about a male because there's something weird with a male. Like it's not like so Freddie Mercury. You can go. From an F2, yeah, she can break glass, can't she? Yes, yeah, from an F2, which is a bass, to a G7, which is heard by dolphins. Did you know that she only, if she can help it, shows one side of her face? So, you, whenever you see a photo of Mariah Carey or if you see her doing an interview, she will only sit with one side of her face to the camera. Apparently, the other side of her face is just horrendous. <laughs> it's a, it's, some say it's just a scab. No, it's just like I, hanging off. She, no, but she does. She just only shows one side of her face. She only shows one side of her face. Or she not like the full. No, she, she's, she's not like front. Profile. She's very vain, and do you know like everyone has a good, oh, a, a good and a bad side, right? Yeah. She's obsessed with her good side, and she'll only show one side of her face. Really? Yeah. 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 It like obviously the it's, it's she's not going to sit completely side on to her camera, but she'll predominantly try and show one side of her face. What about Chuck Berry? He would have right. Front man, won't it? Oh, it? But an, but another good eye catcher, somebody to look yeah. at. It, I mean, not only I mean, for his duck walk, did, did which made duck him walk. Yeah. It was a bit of an arsehole, though, weren't he? A, a bit. Well, apparently. Well, didn't he own a restaurant and he, <laughs> he got arrested or something happened because he, in the in the eighties, uh, in the women's toilets. That was his. That was his place itself. I think. But no, I'm sure it was he owned a restaurant, or maybe it was his place. But in the in in the women's toilets, I mean, why would you have your women's toilets if you had your own place? You just have a bathroom, wouldn't you? No, he had. I'm sure he had a restaurant. It might have been a restaurant, though. You so, might be right. So anyway, in, in the women's center. toilets, there were cameras. Cameras in the toilets, yeah. You got your centre court. Now this is the eighties, really? so they were, yeah. they were they would have been big cameras, a big flashing red light. Oh yeah, not hidden, yeah. but but he'd been to prison before that. Right. In his youth, he'd been to prison. For... It came from quite an... Um, I'm not going to say well-to-do background because it, uh, that might be stretching the imagination slightly, but he was he was slightly privileged, shall we say. Really? Yeah, he, he didn't come from an impoverished background. Uh, well, mind you, if you think about it, he was playing a Gibson 335. Yeah. They weren't cheap guitars even back then. No, no. no. They were jazz guitars. Mm. Yeah. He had he had finances to be able to go on that. He had it quite... I don't. I can't remember what his parents did, but I think his father was a lecturer. Actually, I can't remember now. I might be wrong with that one. But it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't the typical case of poor, poor black boy living and dragging himself up by his bootstraps. No. He, he wasn't. He had it all given to him, really. I guess that's the difference between blues and rock and roll, isn't it? But he always had this chip on his shoulder for some reason. Can I just jump in quick? Cause I'll forget. It won't fag or frag. It was fang. Fang. The, ba- Fang. the band that Bon Scott was in. I don't know why, it's just come to me now. It was Fang. 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 Oh, all right. That's okay. Because it's it detail. I like that because I'm just, not familiar with that type. Just popped it in now. Nah, I know we were in thought, fraternity. Why am I thinking of Fang? I thought, oh, that's that bloody. You were just yeah. thinking of Fangs, weren't you? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Well, the burgers, burgers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as, you, as he looks, but he were hard right. work, weren't he, Chuck? Have you seen the the, the documentary slash film about how Keith Richards tried to get yeah. her, the yeah. this little dream team together? So it was his hero. Wasn't well, it? yeah, it, it was a prime example of never meet your hero. Yeah, and it was uh, Chuck Berry, Keith Richards, Eric Clapton, and um, John Lennon's son, Sean Lennon, and the, you, you get to see some rehearsal footage. So. There's a thing where you have to turn your treble up in order for TV mics to pick things up. So you have to adapt your sound a little bit so the TV can pick up the audio and it can translate across better to people uh, on the TVs. You can't play necessarily like you would to a normal audience. There has to be some compromise with it being filmed. And Keith is producing this film and he's orchestrated everyone getting together because Chuck Berry is Keith's hero. Chuck Berry kicks off a massive stink and he gives him a serious staring down and, and Keith and him, and they the lock eyes and lock horns and... A lot of verbal going off. A lot of verbal going off and you, you occasionally just see uh, Eric smiling in the background, keeping out of it. Um, but 
it must have been very difficult for Keith because it is his hero, and then he finds that his hero is an absolute asshole. There's a story as well where Keith touches um, Chuck Berry's guitar. It's like in, in the, the like the backstage in the green room sort of thing. And Keith can't resist. He's like, I've got to, I've got to have a little tinkle on, not a wee, a tinkle on on Chuck's guitar. Chuck walks in, sees him, smacks him in the face. Yeah. Nobody touches my guitar. Yeah. Like, get over yourself. Yeah. Get over yourself. Johnny, yeah. be good. To a certain extent, that somebody's straight, not strange, but this bloke's playing your guitar as you walk off stage and mm. he just whacked it straight in the face. Now, it, I mean, it wasn't walking off stage it, in the back. Keith Richards would have just jumped up and hit him with guitar itself. Well, like the guy that stood on the stage yeah. at the 40th anniversary or 40, there was some event, wasn't there? Uh, there were, yeah. Where the balloons were released from the sky, and then this guy walk, runs on stage, and, and Keith uses his Telecaster as an axe to knock some <laughs> guy over, and then, and then continues to play side back. Swings, swings it around, <laughs> whacks the kid, puts it back on, and continues playing. Absolutely marvellous bit of footage. It is, yeah. The, way, the, the fact that it captured were brilliant. And, and then he just put the guitar back on and, and fell straight in, into satisfaction again, yeah. like without missing the beat. You know, don't come on my patch. This yeah. is my patch. You stay on down there. And he's a scrawny guy. He's not like, as, like you know, henched, is he? Oh, he's not he's not a big hitter by but, any means. But, but, he's, don't mess with him. but he's got the confidence. He's got the confidence. Too. And he was also a front man for the expensive winos. He were, yeah. 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 So, yeah he, really he did say just... about Chuck Berry, though, he says he loves his work, but he couldn't warm to him. You were obviously disappointed by his meeting with him. Yeah. He says he, he loved him, but he couldn't warm to him because he says, I, I wouldn't even warm to him if I were cremated next to him. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose though, in that front man statue, you've got to put people like Elvis, aren't you, and Jacko? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Jacko. El Elvis and Jacko. Jacko being Michael Jackson for those of you at home. Because that don't understand the Lego. Established. Oh, no, you think as that, a, but as, we have to make clear. You know, as a front man. They've got to be up there, aren't they? Probably top five, maybe. Well, there's that, so you talk about how Liam Gallagher is disappointing in standing there, basically perfectly still, right? And now I think you know where I'm going with this. There's a famous electrifying Super Bowl section where Michael Jackson appears. He gets sprung up from the scent, from the stage, which was relatively new back then. Did you see that? Yeah. At yeah. the Super Bowl? No, no but you saw him being... He did it. Yeah, at, yeah, but like, the he did thing... It he did it at Sheffield. The thing was a Super Bowl, right? He stands there he, perfectly still for what feels like 15 minutes, most of the set, probably. <laughs> and everyone's going bananas because he's not doing anything. He's got his big aviators on, his gold metal pants outside of his jeans. Odd, odd look, I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> and, um, and the more he stands still, the louder, the they, louder get. they get. And he, yeah. they go crazy. And that's... Yeah, but you can't really say Jacko stood still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he eventually moved. But, um, but that is, it's odd that, that that's like one of his most, you could say that that's up there with his with one of his most famous dance moves, uh, the moonwalk, which he actually yeah. stole off somebody. But anyway, well, uh, yeah. he's just standing still. Well, I saw him at Sheffield. He did? Uh, in uh, history tour. And he did the same thing. He come up from the floor. He, he left their house in LA for the come all the way through and it showed you him on this big screen coming down um across America, across the Atlantic, blah blah blah, up M1 and all that stuff. And then he come up from the floor. And he come up from the floor and you were just like, What's that? And then these two hands grabbed out a cage at at, at, at Rocket, and all you could see were just two white gloves. The crowd went up. Absolutely ballistic for probably five minutes. Well, what are you? Um, I <laughs> Nobody I else. Think was, I think it was mascot. <laughs> oh, wait. And then, there weren't Sheffield World Champion Snooker on with it. White, white gloves. <laughs> no, goofy that. Goofy. <laughs> and then he pulled his son out of this spaceship and he like pulled his son out. As, as he pulled his son out, he like jumped up and he did the same thing. So, he so. like jumped out of the air. But this is a, a guy in just a, a space suit with big, you know, with all, lot, all malarkey on. And again, he just stood there and the crap, they were passing out outside him. And I'm like, well, what are you doing? What, what are you You didn't try him out doing? to that then? No, no, I might have kicked him because he, he fell on me for a while. And I was just like, what? And, and then, it just, but that that presence of him yeah. just being there was just yeah. like, and then he set off doing his 
stuff and you're just like, wow. It is hard to oh, to like holy shit, what how the hell does he do all that stuff? It's hard to get your head around the, 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 the like how famous Michael Jackson was. Oh, it, it was yeah. a, a, a like globally yeah. free internet sort of thing. Yeah. And not just like America. Just no. huge. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. huge. Yeah. Massive. Yeah. But it's you know, always wanted. He painted he had women falling and screaming and wanting to fight to get to him and yeah, it, it, and he wore eyeliner. It just, well, guy eyeliner, sorry, I guy eyeliner. had the same effect, you know, when they played the South American. Tour. I would imagine they would have done. The, it's the, the 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 when they landed in Amer in South America. I forget what it was now. South America. Sorry, South America. In South America, I tell you, I've forgotten. <laughs> they they televised it live all day. Really? Mm. They only do that for like a you know a coronation or something over here, don't they? Yeah. But they televised it live all day, the plane landing, them coming out and meeting the crowd and all that. And it was it were like such a big event, televised, everything shut down. And even in the airport, there wasn't there wasn't like airplane announcements of please go to gate forty two. You're <laughs> fit. Yeah. You know, there were none of that. It, they were playing Queen songs over wow. Hanoi. So it was such a big deal. Yeah. Did, did you know that Michael Jackson had a patent? So he painted the shoes. Where he does, you know, smooth criminal and he leans forward. Yeah. yeah. So he designed some shoes, or I mean, they say he designed, but he, he probably. He had friends. He had friends, and he said, I'm going to get this painted. But, um, I'm going to get this painted. There you go. That's Mickey Mouse. Yeah, I was say. Speaking of Mickey Mouse. Where's Minnie? Actually, I said, I've got another story to follow it. What? So, Mickey Mouse? He designed his shoes and it slid into a piece of flooring and he leant forward, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that's his painting. So apparently, in. Mm, Michael Jackson's later years, like, um, I don't know, like two, uh, 2000 onwards, he was really into business. So he owned the Beatles back catalog mm. yeah, and all mm. the other stuff. And he was he, he didn't like touring anymore. And he didn't really like producing music. He just wanted to make money. And he was looking at buying the um, the Marvel franchise because he wanted to produce oh, films. Nice. Yeah, it was, it, it, it was, he was publicly making a uh, noise about saying, I want to buy Marvel. Yada 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 blah 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 blah. Uh, anyway, he got nipped. He got pipped out of it because Disney bought it. But yeah, he was like yeah. obsessed with like making. Would he enough to manage to do that? Yeah, because if you think about the early noughties, nobody cared about Marvel. It was like there wasn't uh, people. Yeah, it was just really getting going. Yeah, wasn't it? really. Yeah. It, like yeah. Wasn't, yeah, it wasn't yeah. really until Iron Man. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, until like just started getting interested. It just started out that one. It was just starting to kickstart. Yeah. But he was he was considering well, buying it. it now. Yeah, he would have had the funds to do it because they were looking for anybody that could get us. Yeah, yeah. Hands and on. there was in he he got his suspicion around two thousand and eight. You know, the second wave of suspicion, uh, which was his tour. Very superstition. Michael Jackson's tour, the second wave of superstition. Oh, wow, okay. No, uh, but yeah, there you go. Okay, so now what I want you to do now, gentlemen, I want you to climb inside the time machine. Ooh. And I'm going to set the dials for 1991. Mick Hocknell. <laughs> Only too tight to mention. <laughs> slash holding back the ears. Yeah. No? Well, no, no, not exactly. No, because we're on about front men. And um, I'm, go I'm going to uh, I'm going to take you back to a, a certain time within 1991. It was, I think it was in August. And you'll find me travelling down the M1 motorway to the Midlands. We arrive at Donington Park from 1991, Monsters of Rock. So we're in 1991, we're at Monsters of Rock, and I'm travelling down with a mate of mine called Neil. He's got, he's a concert photographer, and he's got two tickets. Well, should I say he's got two passes? I'd love to do that. Sorry? I'd love to do that. Or get a ticket or a pass. Both. For <laughs> Monsters of Rock. You get a train, you know. Well, I've got to say, Wayne, you're right, because we, we got to the gates... And he gave me my pass. Now, this pass weren't an access all areas pass, but it was a laminated pass, and it allowed me to go backstage. Laminated. Now, he was going into the pit to do some photography, obviously, in front of stage. So we get to the gates of Donington Park, where you would normally hand over hard-earned cash to go in, because previously it had been you turn up and you paid. But what is it there? The how, how, how much is it? Oh, I don't to know. To pay on doing it, what, what would you be looking at? Looking at? I don't know. Roughly. I don't want to guess. Well, back in the day, 1991, to go 
to a festival. No, like, like I said, this year's or next year's. Oh, do you want to know how much Glastonbury oh, it's is? It's called Download Festival. What, yeah, what, 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 what would Glastonbury be? So, obviously, with the cost of living, Glastonbury is about £300. For how long? A week? For Wednesday to Sunday. And uh, Oh, so this is a thing. what store hotel is that? Well, it's camping. But, okay. right, I saw the Rolling Stones back in 2013 at Glastonbury. I don't know if the listeners know this. I might have mentioned it in a previous episode. However... In that same year, they were selling tickets to see them in Hyde Park in excess of £300. And I saw them and many other bands for £300. Yeah, I was say, and they did an original song called Glastonbury Girl, which is a take on Factory Girl that they did. And they've never played that before. And they've never played Glastonbury before. So unique. So, yeah. But, but for your £300, how many days of entertainment do you get for that? Wednesday to Sunday. Wednesday to Sunday. Be, that's I there's think that 20, but, and there's twenty vans on. And I think that's a great deal. And the beauty is that you get to, in festivals. The reason why I love festivals, that's I, know we great, do. I know we're, we're drifting off the topic. Oh, but, right. but the the reason why I love festivals so much is because you discover things that you don't need. You yeah. don't. You weren't yeah. expecting yeah. to discover. Yeah. You like walk into somewhere. And go, oh, they're amazing. You know, or, or you'll be like, I don't know. Let's say someone's playing who, who any other normal circumstance. You're like, wow, I only see them. But you think, oh, such and such is playing. But actually. Such and just playing, and I really want to see them. So you take sort of some weird sort of like glee from saying, "I'm snubbing this very such and such." Well, normally I would see them, but I'm still doing to see snubbing them to see this. Does that make sense? Yeah, I don't think it gets, but, but how many acts are on all together at Glastonbury? Oh, oh, nobody knows. Twenty or forty, <laughs> hundreds. Hundreds. Is it really? Oh, there's loads, yeah. And, and yeah. there's, there's even there's small attempts. In. They're even yeah. like they're they're sections. So for like, three hundred quid, that's not bad. No. And there's a it, child's area. What is it? Five, <laughs> so this, you've got five days, and let's say there's fifty bands on over them five days. Like, yeah. this, this, this it's ten, better now. The toilet for services are better. Yeah. So you've got ten bands a day, five days, three hundred. I don't. And music doesn't stop till three o'clock in the morning. And you talk about toilets, right? So last time I was there, there was a mirrored toilet, right? So it was a two-way mirror. Yeah. Well, you can watch right? yourself. And it was right next to the main stage. That's odd. It was a novelty. It was a joke one. But it wasn't a joke one because it was a real toilet. But right next to the main stage where the stones were playing, right. there's this outside, you know, where the big uh, TVs are, there's this mirrored box yeah. with a staircase going up to it. And what it is is you walk up there and you're on, you go for like a crap a dome. or whatever you may need. And inside, you can see the crowd. You can see, you can see, you can see no, no, you can see, the, you can't see the stage. You can see the, like hundreds of people staring back at you. But they can't see you because it's mirrored. Thankfully, but <laughs> hopefully, I don't think I could go. <laughs> I think, yeah, I guess I think no. My sphincter will go no. For, for three hundred quid, I don't no. think that's a bad. That's that's a what, bad three or four. For crap. <laughs> three hundred quid for a good turn <laughs> while you're watching three hundred people being... look, looking back at you. <laughs> I don't think that's bad. That no. you'd have to camp, Wayne. That's the only problem for you. Yeah, that 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 would be my downfall. Well, he's been saying for years that we we should go, but. It's, yeah, it's, I'd love to do. The only thing that I don't, I can't, is the camping bit. It's what the camping bit. No, <laughs> I can't. I am not living like a tramp. No, I'm not spending three hundred quid to sleep like a tramp, an homeless person. No. Now, <laughs> so what would you look? What would you say a ticket is for um, Donington? I don't know what just, it was. Just a rough guess. Now, no today's, today's price is... Oh, today's price is probably about 250 Oh, it's, 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 it, yeah, it's, it's named to download. Yeah, download. Oh, well, it's yeah. still going. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Then, yeah still going. They did run this year. We got passes. We went to... So would you say 200 quid's a good price? A I, good a good guess? 250 No, I don't think it would be 200 quid. quid. More at all. I think it was 100 quid back then. I would say it was probably somewhere around about 80 quid. See, that's a... So we'll say 80 quid. I just to shut you up. That, you're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I want to know. I want <laughs> to know. I've got my money out now and I want to count. So we People the car, out here want to the know car. these things. We walked to the gate. To get, we, we, we walked past the queue that was standing at the gate. Oh, a lovely feeling. Oh, yeah. And it was, now this is where it gets, you know, this is a great feeling. And you show your pass. Go on, boys. In you go. And all of them are thinking, who oh, are they? Who oh, are they? Who's oh, that? Who oh, are they? Who oh, are they with? Was he? So Neil, I think on I might have got this wrong, but my memory says that on that particular day, Neil was working for Record Mirror. So our pastor said Record Mirror. So for all intents and purposes, I'm working for Record Mirror that day. I got my camera with me, but he was doing all stuff and I was his guest. So he gets down to the stage, we gets to the there's another another uh, security thing you have to go through. We eventually gets to the stage. Now Donington Park is is actually a race circuit. 
And in the middle of the race circuit is a big field. At one end, there's a big lake, and in the center of the field, it's, it, it's, there's this massive big field. And there is a stage at the bottom, and that is Donington Park. Is it just one stage then? There was just one big stage. Yeah, I think there still is, isn't there? Really? Just one, yeah. Yeah. Oh, they just all not very big then. Do you still take it into it was a big stage? Oh, it's, yeah. It was, I mean, there were over 80,000 people there, were really. It, they used to have a lot more in, but in a couple of years before, I think you were 88, 89, I think two, two young kids got yeah. crushed at front. Right. Because there were like 100 and odd thousand people. What they're watching? They're watching Guns and Roses. Guns and Roses, yeah. Yeah. And they had to sort of like bring health and safety. <laughs> yeah. Because, see what they, because the thing is, is it sloped. It's a bit like an amphitheatre. Yeah. And it slopes down, and it usually rained. Because Axel stopped short, didn't he? No. He, 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 he told him at the end as he were walking off, be careful, don't get yourself killed. Yeah, but... But two had already been killed. But I thought, didn't he stop the show until the... the they opened some barriers or something like that. He says, we're not carrying on until them barriers are all open. I don't think they were aware until they'd the left the stage what had I, happened. I don't know why I'm thinking that then. I just thought that they stopped the show because if they, they, they didn't tell him trouble. No, they didn't tell him. They no, I, I remember him. No, yeah, I remember him saying because that they were frightened get, that if they did know, they would stop the show, and then that would be the end of it. Oh, that's probably what I've read then. Um, I might be wrong with that, but I think that's how it went. On this particular occasion, it was dry. It was warm. It was a nice August sunny day, and we get to the uh, the next security which takes you backstage. And as you go backstage, and I'm thinking, this is like, you know, different world, and it is. Mm -hmm. You get backstage, and it's it, there's like a compound within a compound. So there's all these people milling around. And on the right-hand side, there was all these, like, there was a picket fence, and beyond that was small, like, sectioned areas where all the music press was. And people were drifting in and out. What bands just walking about, were yeah. really? Yeah, and bands just, were being just... interviewed by the music press, in and out, mooching about. So, well, well, all right, we'll get we'll, back to the front of the stage. The the gigs got. Who's the first band now? Thunder. Thunder. Now, you're talking about front men here. Mm -hmm. And there's not many better voices than Danny Bowles. Great uh, right voice. Great right voice. Brilliant yeah. voice. So, they opened the show and they had a stormer. They had a stormer. And I'm stood just at left hand side at stage. Uh, great, great voice. They had a lot of a lot of bad luck in their career, as you well know. Yeah. Wrong place, wrong time. Grunge. <laughs> Grunge. Yeah. On, on the night were it night before the flow out? Yeah, night before they're supposed to fly it to American tour. Yeah. All the Grunge is now at the scene. They're Sorry? Not, the Grunge is now at the scene. They yeah. don't want none of that rock stuff. Uh, all the radio stations in America went from playing classic rock or British rock to playing grunge. So they says, well, it's not one. Much. They were actually packing that night to go the following day, and they cancelled the tour. Right. Because nobody wanted it. Nobody wanted to see Thunder. They all wanted to see bands like Nirvana, Nirvana and stuff like that. Yeah. The Nirvana were not seen. So the second band on that day was Poison. Now, Poison are not my thing, really. Although, they have got a connection with Slice, because he joined them for a short spell in, the, in his early days. Yeah? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I don't think they did any tour or recording with him, but he joined them. Uh, and then in 92, they had Richie Coxon. Richie Coxon joined them, one of my favourite guitarists. He joined them, did a couple of years with them, an album and two tours, I think. But I obviously didn't know that at that stage. They were just like an American air metal band that I weren't paying much attention to. Then, who was third? Aerosmith. Who? Aerosmith. Never heard of him. No. 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 Silversmith. A silversmith? Now that's a band. Now we're talking about a frontman here, aren't we? Oh, Steve Tyler. What a Steve frontman. Tyler. Yeah. Know, He's got everything that you've been know, describing yeah, earlier. Oh, he did. He was heavily inspired by Mick Jagger as well. Sorry? He was inspired by Mick Jagger to the point that he oh, yeah. impersonated Mick Jagger when he was a young teenager. He used to pretend to be Mick Jagger's yeah. brother. He had all these moves, didn't he? Yeah. He had all the lips. Moves. But we're talking about frontmen with charisma, engaging the audience, the ability to sing. There's not many people going to find a voice on Steve Tyler for that type of stuff that he's doing. And they're just promoting Pump Album. Oh, good album. One of yeah. the finest. Yeah. So it, it we're getting... Yeah, and then, then who walks on stage? Please welcome on stage, special guest... Gary Glitter. Gary Glitter. <laughs> anyway, anyway, showbiz himself. Here we come. Double G walks on stage, dressed as... 
Jimmy Page. Jimmy Page. I didn't know this. Jimmy Page special guest of her. I don't know, like one song or two songs. And uh, so that's a rate they are, that, isn't it? Oh, I, I, I never we're knew only, that. We're only into the third act. But it's, it's still a rate. Another band to come, it's yeah. It's still a rate they are. Oh, it's a rate they are. Jimmy rate Page. Rate. That's a rate they are. That's, that, that's a bit special, that one. So they did their set, which was brilliant. Donington's never looked so good. No. I never looked so good. No. Oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> and the, the, the headliner that year was Whitesnake. Yeah. Oh, Darling. So, so you got Darling. <laughs> Oh, Do Je <laughs> Jeffrey Darling with Jeffrey your Darling. pass. Jeffrey Darling, are you still here? Jeffrey Good Darling, on. I love the pass. Would you like to come up and give us a tune? <laughs> and would you like to join our new guitarist, Steve Vai? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess see. Oh, brilliant. So on that day, we're talking about frontman. On that day, I saw Thunder Singer, Danny Boyles. Danny Boyles. Uh, not bothered about Poison. No, no, I'm not a Poison fan. I really. get to see Don't. Aerosmith, Steve Tyler. And I get to see uh, David Coverdale. Who was the favourite? Who was the best frontman of that gig, that whole event? Without a doubt, Steve Tyler. And what did you do to Steve Tyler? What did I do to him? You you had an interaction with him, didn't you? His pictures. No, you had a bit more than that. Oh, this was backstage. Oh, this was all backstage. Oh. <laughs> I ate sous chef, his arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> He was coming out one of these tents that were doing all the interviews, and he was walking down towards me. Now, in my head, I've said to him, Steve. All right, Steve. And he's gone, help, Jeff. And he's gone, please, quick, arrest him. <laughs> and out came Sting. <laughs> <laughs> and I think he's just looked, I just, I think he's just looked up at me bemused. I can't really remember what the... In my mind, things have worked differently over the years, but I don't know whether it's... I remember, I remember saying, all right, Steve, or something like that. And did he acknowledge you? Yeah, he looked at me. And... I think you high five. I, I, I don't know what it... No. Well, I, I thought you high five to a fence. I think I did, but... Yeah, I'm sure. I, this is the story I remember. Like, I, I seem to play it down. You, you high fived him through a fence. Did, like, you, uh, did you see covered it? You were wearing striped pyjamas. And <laughs> he was wearing a nat uniform. And you know, oh, I, did you get to see Coverdale and uh, Danny Balls behind stage? And, and all, and no, I never saw him. You didn't see them? No. Uh, strangely enough, though. Hold on, hold on. We need to go back here. Because, like, I, I, I've based a lot of my good chats on that my dad has high five Steve Tyler. No. So if you're destroying this now, and he's. <laughs> if it's, <laughs> it's just live. <laughs> Well, you high five Steve Tyler. Yeah. It, so the so the last forty four years you've was, lied. It was it was like a picket <laughs> fence. It was like a picket fence that was running alongside the field, and I, my past didn't get me beyond that. Mm -hmm. And there were there was like these mark miniature marquees that they were they were going in and out of. There were different and these marquees were music press. So it might be crying and they'd be walking into crying. I'm doing an interview, walking out. They're going to go into the next one, which would be some raw or whatever. So else. would he have been there then, Mick Wall? Uh, I don't know whether they were there that year. I don't know. John Otten? I don't know. Oh, what? I don't know. Too so then you, you would have just high five him. So, 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 you'd, so <laughs> in my head, in my memory, he, he walked down. And now obviously, I, and I, it dawns on me who it is. He's walking towards me. Jeffrey Dalek. I see. And I think we did. Like and then he walked I to my right and walked down. Uh, now... And those were oh, the days where he was painting a little teardrop in his eye. And remember, face. like, who else was there? Because if he were there, Perry was there. Well, you would have thought so. But because they always did interviews together. But Perry, yeah, Perry must have been there. The toxic twins. Yeah. But at that time, they weren't. No. But I'm thinking, I was so focused on because I'd recognised all that where he stood in front of me. Oh, yeah, you'd have passed Joe Perry, but you're not known. And I'd seen, mm. I'd, that's Steve Tyler. That's but Steve it, Tyler. That's Steve Tyler. If you're going to pick one, you're going to pick Steve Tyler, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a good. Um... And did he look like pirates at <laughs> pirates at Caribbean bloke then? No, um, what no. they call it. Um, he, he was sporting a he little white, teardrop, wasn't he? He got a white. Oh God, he, what they call it? Jack Sparrow. He got a t-shirt on. Because looked... over this t-shirt, he got a white. I'm going to say silk jacket on. Because he's a lad. Because he's a lad. Because now he looks he looks more like Jack Sparrow <laughs> than Jack Sparrow does. Well, so Johnny Depp based yeah. the character of Jack Sparrow on Keith Richards. Really? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say Steve Tyler. And do you know who who, who played Keith Richards? Sorry, do you know who played uh, Jack Sparrow's dad? Keith Richards. No. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Uh, but Paul McCartney was in there somewhere as well. But yeah, it was Keith Richards. He was playing piano. Yeah, he based the whole character on Keith Richards. Yeah, Keith Richards. Well, is really, the, yeah. 
the I think Paul McCartney, Paul McCartney like, played some guy in a, in, in a jail cell, and, and it was like, and, and Paul yeah. McCartney played his character who was telling a really long story about nothing, yeah. and Jack Sparrow was bored of it, and Paul was oh, like, that doesn't that does sound like Paul McCartney one bit. Yeah, but so there you go, frontman. Are they, uh, so would you say that's my turn? What What are we taking from frontman? What do What's the necessary ingredient just to to round this episode off? The right. necessary ingredient for frontman is for me entertainment, eye catching. Don't be boring. You, the stage is a big place. Use it. The stage do it. is a big place. I like yeah. it. Yeah. And what's yours? Uh, I'm pretty much echoing what Wayne said. All right. Yeah. And I will say. <laughs> oh, sorry, <go> on. <laughs> and I will say, if you're going to get somebody to fill it, Mr. Tyler will do that job. Mr. Tyler, get a Tyler to do any job. And I'm going to say it's confidence. To be tiling. Yes. Tiling. You don't want a Tyler to do a roof job. Well, you might do a roof Tyler. Do do. Do do. do. <laughs> Sorry, somebody put 50 pence in his back. Quick, is this? There's no worse when <laughs> you're pushing you, is there? <laughs> when, it's, when it's pressuring you to move on or, or to say it's something. It's because he's got something to say about his next topic. Listen, Alan. That's what it is. Listen, Alan, I'll leave you with this, this famous quote. Did it? <laughs>